Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Jeffrey's Drawings. Drawings. No, I have a bunch of things I want to show you today, but uh, yeah, so let's get started. So this show is basically going to be about me making some drawings and showing you some drawing related things. Uh, actually, I think it's going to be called Jeffrey's Drawing Programs. Jeffrey's Drawing Programs. Like that. Or maybe we just call it, uh, we don't call it Jeffries. The name of this show is going to be called Drawing Programs. Okay, now what I want to do first is introduce you to some watercolors that my friend Arthur just gave to me. Uh, here's a nice one. It's still in plastic, maybe I can take it out. Oh, well, maybe I should take it out right now. Oh yeah, okay, I can take it out. These are watercolors from Puerto Rico. They're very pretty. Let's see. And... Take this one out of the package here. So you can see without the plastic. Ooh, very nice. Nice watercolor by Arthur. I'm going to move this stuff out of here. Here's a watercolor that Arthur made, and this was made in Puerto Rico. It's a beautiful landscape. He gave me this because I gave him an iPad. And then here's the other one. The other one is very similar. They come sort of as a pair. And here is the other one. Very nice. Beautiful watercolor. Thank you, Arthur. Okay, what's next? Up next, we have a rose. This rose is by my friend Austin Lee. And on the back of the rose is a portrait of me that he did. And up next, we have a book. The Way of the Hardcore. Journey to Scandinavia uh, by my friend Goody Pal. And Goody Pal gave me this book to scan. And here's the page uh, that says it belongs to me. And I have not scanned it. I mean, it's being scanned right now a little bit by the, uh, by the video. But I wanted to share with you this funny thing uh, here. It's a sheet of paper that says uh, my friend Goody Pal does not have uh, chlamydia, but also maybe the test was not so good for having that. And uh, something else that I want to show you related to drawing programs, this page here. So something that's cool about this page is that this page talks about a piece by the composer named uh, James Saunders, I believe. Uh, yeah, James Saunders, here. And the idea is that it's a music piece, um, but this is the piece, so you're supposed to, with pencil, place a dot within each circle, like do, 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 do. And here, you're supposed to, with pencil, shade each rectangle with short strokes as quickly as possible. So you're supposed to go like do, 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 do. And this is the random line trace, where you're supposed to trace finger around circles at a constant speed, pausing briefly at each vertex like this like that and the idea here is that these are um, musical instruments these are musical instruments but they are also compositions so they are sort of instruments that are also musical pieces in a way I think they're similar to drawing programs here's one the fist hammer repeatedly hammer the page with clenched fist as fast and as lightly as possible on the indicated spot like this. Right. So, in a way, it's a 
it's kind of a drawing program in a sense. It has you draw some things or hit some things on a page uh, according to some rules and there's already some things that are predefined for you. In the same way that like in Microsoft Paint or something, uh, you sort of have a blank page but then there's only so many tools that you can use. This is a sort of blank page but there's so many tools or places that you can kind of fill in. Okay, but anyway, this is Goody Pal's book and I have to scan it for him, uh, which I will do soon once I have a scanner. Um, anyway, it's a pretty book, but that is now part of my collection. Next. Yeah, next, next, next. It's time for Jeffrey's drawings. Very nice, they are cute. So I think first what we're going to do is go over some drawings and then I might do a drawing. Okay, so this first one, this is a drawing that I did on February of 2018. Uh, 822 and this is this was written later but this is made for my friend Tiff Hawken but she did not take it because we went to the arcade and then she forgot uh, but here it is there's this little guy here and he's going like you know something like that and there's a triangle circle and a square over there let's go over some more I think here's another one this is very nice. There's this little thing here. The flower man. Uh, this guy. This one here. There's like this kind of Dragon Ball Z guy. Like... Hey! Yeah, this kind of thing. And then a chasm. With a little bridge. Okay. Next, things are really stretched out. Mm -hmm. Next, I gave a lot of these away, so some are missing. Here is a portrait of Lydia, and there's a, a cookie, a baby named Cookie, with his foot, and some flowers on her dress. And then she has two faces actually so this is her lips and her eyes, and there's the other face there, and some pigtails. Next, we have these two guys fighting for some things. These guys are fighting against one another, and this guy is being tortured. And there's a kind of star coming up. Okay, back to the landscape. Ooh, this guy's lonely down here. He's lonely on the side. And yeah, this guy's okay. Anyway, there's many more drawings, but I think, oh, this guy's shooting a gun. Like that. Pretty simple one. Yeah, there's many more drawings, but I think we're going to do a new drawing. Ooh, I like this one, though. Yeah. So we do a new drawing. We do a drawing together. So perhaps what you should do is you should get some paper out. And you don't have to draw what I draw, of course, but maybe you can just draw with me. Because this is something I drew last night. This girl hanging out with her baggy pants. Girl hanging out with her baggy pants. Yeah, so you should maybe get some paper out and do a drawing with me. Now, here's a new page, and I think we should make a drawing together. That's what I think. The sun is sort of getting in my way, so what I might do is move the tripod a little bit. Yeah, so that's looking a little bit better. Cool. Now, let's begin. Let's begin. So, yeah, I mean, this show is going to be called Drawing Programs, so at least that's what I think it's going to be called. And the reason why I call it Drawing Programs is because I am often making uh, computer drawing software a lot of the times. Uh, but, uh, you know, the thing about drawing software is it's basically you have some features that you can use on the computer to make your drawings, uh, and that sort of limits how the drawing ends up looking. And this is not very dissimilar to how painters and other artists have always painted. <clears throat> you know, they've sort of uh, always like painted according to some kinds of rules, whether it's perspective or something like that. So this shows really me talking about the rules that I have in my head while drawing and how I sort of change those rules as I go. So I'm not really sure if I'm very good at, at drawing actually, but you know, maybe if there's something that you can learn from me, then this would be the place 
to learn. Okay. Oh, where do we begin? I think we just uh, chill out. Let me turn the music up in my headphones so we can get going a little bit. All right. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna make some L's here. This is a little guy. This is a little guy. It's a little something on my pen. Let's see. Yeah. Lately I've been making lots of dots to sort of try to reach out into different spaces before I draw lines there. And you know, that's okay. That's something you can do. Generally when I started drawing I'm not really thinking about uh, any, any subject and I don't, um, you know, I'm also not really looking at uh, at a subject matter. But uh, in terms of whether they're abstract or representational, I mean, that depends. I think now I'm drawing like a bird. Uh, but yeah, I try, I try to approach drawing with a, a clear mind a little bit. Or, you know, maybe my mind is filled with things and then while I'm drawing, the mind tends to be emptied out in a particular way. I do like to make sounds while I make lines because it kind of affects how the lines are. And, you know, it's imaginary. It's not really affecting them, but you can imagine that it would affect them. And that can help sometimes because drawing itself is kind of imaginary practice. You know, there's really no image there on the page, but, uh, you know, your mind perceives it as a, as a picture. Yeah, I mean, this is my first time doing this, so it's a little awkward to the way that I have to pose myself. But I think that we're doing okay. Ah, right, what's next? So I think we have something going on here. Hello. Something is happening here, I think. But I'm going to unbutton my sleeves. In case you're wondering, the tool that I'm using is the Pigma Graphic One. It's like a micron, but the tip is a little bit different. Maybe the camera will focus here. Yeah, it's sort of, sort of like a micron, but the tip is like a marker tip, like that. So you can get both fine lines, but also thick lines. I'll do a thick line here for the ear of this thing. Like this. Yeah. Anyway, let's get going. I think we're gonna go like this way. So I don't know what these things are, but sometimes when I don't know what something is, I like to repeat it in a different kind of way. Yeah, something like that.
So I'm not really following many rules here other than, you know, what I'm doing and what I'm not doing, right? So what I'm doing is drawing with black and white on a piece of paper. What am I not doing? I'm not uh, looking at something, observing it, and trying to recreate what I see. I'm not drawing with a particular goal in mind. I'm not putting things sort of on the page in a weird order. Uh, by that I mean I'm not sort of making lots of little pictures. Instead I'm focusing on the big picture, if that makes any sense. That's something that when I was in college my, my TA, uh, Kyler, told me this. He was looking at my sketchbook and there was all these heads all over the place. Like there was a head here, a head here, a head here, a head here, whatever. And uh, he said, you know, Jeffrey, you should probably just make pictures. Um, yeah, you should just like make one each page in your sketchbook like a picture. And then I thought, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. And then I started doing that, and I've been doing that basically every day ever since he told me. Uh, so that's been going on for several years now, like 10 years or something, almost 10 years. And yeah, that's basically the story of how I became what is often called a painter. I mean, I'm not really painting right now, and this show is called Drawing Programs, so what do I mean by a painter? Well, the thing about the painter is the painter is like a mystical kind of figure, right? The painter is kind of like saying, oh, I'm an artist. I'm an artist. Oh, I'm a painter. Painter. But it's not a big deal. I mean, the painter basically is just somebody who makes pictures uh, for their own sake, right? So, you know, you can even kind of consider certain types of photography painting. It's just that throughout history, we sort of, we think of the painter as someone who's just making images for their own sake. And so that's sort of what I'm doing here. So this kind of drawing is not a sketch, right? This drawing is not a sketch because it will not become anything else after. In a way, I like to think of drawing as a kind of prayer. Uh, oh, that sounds a little crazy. I mean, why would you think that drawing is like a prayer? Well, you know, I'm not trying to be religious, that religious or anything, but the thing is people have been drawing for a long, long time. People have been drawing for, you know, thousands of years, making pictures or paintings or what have you with different media. And often the things that we really, really enjoy are things that are many, many hundreds of years old. And so, you know, when you're actually sitting down to make a drawing, you have to consider the fact that these things do tend to last a long time uh, because people don't often want to like throw them away and stuff. And so, yeah, they last like, you know, they could last a long while. I'm gonna move my tripod to get out of the sun. Much better. Yeah, so this, this drawing that I'm making here, I mean, it could last like, maybe, I don't know, it could last like 10 years or it could last like 200 years, but you know, I've developed a kind of little visual language that is maybe hard to describe in words, but it's easier to see on video sort of how things are coming together and sort of what my little rules are and how I'm working at the moment. But, yeah, I mean, maybe this drawing lasts 300 years or something, and maybe nobody cares about it for the, the first 150 years. But then maybe some thing actually reads it. Maybe not somebody, but maybe a computer has to scan this drawing one day and try to understand it with, like, machine learning or something. And then the drawing finally becomes interesting to someone or something. And so you have to have a little faith uh, in that kind of thing. So, in a way, like, when you sort of say a prayer, you're talking to something you're not really sure. You might have faith that God exists and you might be trying to hope that your prayer gets answered uh, and hope that somebody sort of he, he sort of listens to what you're saying. But um, <coughs> in terms of drawing, I think that rather than talking to, to God, or, you know, you're sort of talking to time and you're talking to people and beings through time, whether they be uh, organic beings or artificial beings, this kind of thing. And that's why I always tend to put some kind of identifier on the drawing. Now these days it's not so cool to do that because many artists they have a sort of gallery exhibition and the exhibition tends to sort of define uh, a provenance for their work. So when they have an exhibition uh, the sort of the fact that they had an exhibition and everything's like sort of like you know, sort of like proves that, the, that they made the work and stuff like that, and maybe they signed the back or something. But I don't really trust the back side of drawings because I know that things are often scanned and they don't scan in the backs. So, yeah, I don't know about that so, so much. 
Um, and so I like to sign the top or the side or something like that with some identifying information. So maybe I'll sign this one now. I don't always sign when I'm done. JAS 2018. It is April 9th and it is 4.37 p.m. Okay, let's do a little bit of this. Very nice. Okay, so I've put my stamp on here and you know, maybe in 300 years somebody comes along and they see this and they think it's pretty cool. That's the, that's the goal anyway. Or maybe someone comes along now, but it doesn't really matter. Because what matters mainly to me is the idea that you're developing a kind of way of speaking visually. A sort of way of talking with lines. And yeah, talking with lines is something that people don't do very often so much. I often say that the painting is just a picture message. You know, we always used to, we're all used to sending picture messages on our phones, but yeah, a painting is just a picture message, man. I think this one's almost done. But we're really ignoring this left side here, so let's do something like that. Maybe we add some, I don't know, something like this. And maybe we can do some dots over here. You see, the thing is, this is my first time doing this, and I'm looking at the camera a lot, so I'm not paying too much attention to the page, and so things are looking pretty graphic. But I think for the next episode, I'll probably try to look more at the page, and we'll get something that's more similar to what I usually draw when I'm not recording. Hmm. But we're getting there. It's not so bad. Nice. So maybe you're drawing now and listening to the music that I have playing or something like that, or listening to my voice a little bit. But yeah, you know, this is some this is a video that you should also be drawing to as well. So if you have pens or paper or something, you should hang out and you should draw with me. It's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I am in Esonet, Massachusetts, drawing on the floor of my sister's room. That's right, on the floor of my sister's room. All right. Yeah, this is a very cartoony one, but that's okay. Next time I do something a little more arty. Yeah, it's very cartoony. So get a little closer to the page. Okay, I think we're about to wrap things up here. This is looking all right. What else? I mean, yeah, that seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. Maybe like 
add a little border here. Cool. Okay, well, thank you for joining me for Jeffrey's drawing programs, or sorry, drawing programs. Yeah, thank you for joining me for drawing programs. Uh, and I will see you for the next episode, episode two. And that is all. Whoop. That is almost all. Yeah, that is all. Goodbye. Hello, everybody. This is Jeffrey speaking, and this is Drawing Programs. A lot of times I like to make sounds while making lines, but you probably already knew that. Dun, dun.
Yeah, it's a little bit weird drawing this way. It's, I mean, when I'm recorded, I mean, like, often I'll hold the paper in different ways and stuff, but this is, like, a little challenging. Having to keep it in one spot. But that's why I'm here, to challenge myself, to do it for you guys. That's what I'm doing. Doing it for my peeps. So tomorrow, I'm going to Berkeley. Back to Berkeley. Going back. Going back. Going back to Berkeley. Going back, going back, back to Berkeley. Berkeley. Yeah, tomorrow I'm going back to Berkeley. Lots of dotted lines these days. Who knows why? Going back. Oh yeah, going back, back to Berkeley. Going back, back to Berkeley. I haven't programmed anything in a couple weeks. I think it's time to get back to some programming as well. But this drawing is kind of a program. You know, I often think of like the different modernist painters as being like coming up with their own kind of drawing program that they sort of stuck to. Like Mondrian eventually did those weird liney things or like, you know, Jackson Pollock doing his drip painting. I often think of them as sort of coming up with a set of features that they might uh, you know, if they were programmers, maybe those would be their features, like, there are their different limitations that they add to their software. <sighs> so, I mean, you're looking at the bonus drawing now. The bonus drawing. The bonus. Of the first episode of drawing programs with Jeffrey. I mean, I don't think anybody will ever watch these, but if you are watching and you're watching right now, then you should send me an email and tell me that you're watching. That's how I know you're watching this part. So please, if you're watching this part of the video, send me an email right now at me at jas Dot life. That's M-E at J-A-S dot life. Or if you prefer, you can text me. Send me a text if you're watching this part of the video. You can text me at 508-728-4043. That's right. You can text me at 508 
Yeah. I just gave you my number so you can take me on a date if you want. But please don't. Just text me and say you are watching this part of the video. So do that right now. You can do that right now. Getting a little bit more comfortable with this drawing program. Much better. Uh, I've been drawing flowers for like three years now, mostly flowers. Before that, I was not drawing, I was mostly programming, and before that, I was mostly drawing portraits of my friends. And before that, I was mostly drawing clowns, believe it or not. I was drawing a lot of clowns. But yeah, it sort of tends to be how I work as I approach similar subjects uh, over long extended periods, and then they sort of evolve into other subjects. I mean, so I've been doing a lot of flowers the last few years, and lately I've been doing these sort of crashing butterflies things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. This one's looking kind of close to being finished, actually. I think they don't have to add a whole lot more. I mean, it's hard to know, you know? Because often when I'm drawing these kinds of drawings, they're not single session drawings. I'll do like, you know, session for 30 minutes or an hour or something. And then I'll like leave the drawing and come back later when I have some more energy. And when things kind of look a little bit different. But I want these to be single session drawings so you can see start to end. And it makes it pretty easy. I mean, I have a nice microphone on my iPhone right now. And that makes things easier. But I should stop soon because Arthur is waiting for me in the other room. And so it might be time to sign this picture now. Also, this pen is a little bit bugged up. Yeah, so let's sign. J A S 2018 April 9 at 5:15. Okay. Finishing touches. Do, 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 Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a pretty cliche drawing for me. At least for what I've been up to lately. I think that talking and the recording and stuff like that is not so good for inventing new forms. So I'm sort of falling back on a lot of things that, I, that are in my head. But generally when I'm drawing, I like to come up with new stuff. Uh, but I think that requires a lot of focus. So I think it will take me some practice recording and getting used to the camera to actually come up with new things for this particular audience or this particular mode. Uh, but yeah, maybe this is new for you uh, still. And it looks sort of fun. But for me, it's actually kind of boring. I mean, there's not much that's going on here that I have not seen before in my own drawings. Which means, in a way, it's kind of a failure. But, you know, it's just relaxing as well. You don't always have to be inventing new things. Sometimes you can just take your pen for a ride. And I guess that's what I'm doing. But that's the ticket, I think. It's the end of the road, right about, uh, now. Okay, thank you very much.